Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of The Last Hundred Yards, Volume 4, The Russian Front, extending Mike Denson's series to the Eastern Front, Russia versus Germany. So let's crack it open, see what you get in this one. The Russian front, aka the front with the no good guys. So, here we go. Very nice artwork on the cover, colorized, obviously, but in a, in a really good way. Looks very smug there with his machine gun across his shoulder. All right, so here we go. We get GMT's bag of bags, and these are pretty big bags too, so that's nice. We've got four dice. Black, red, yellow, and white. They are 10-sided dice for the system. And interestingly, they give you a 10 on them. So you don't have to guess what a zero means. So we roll them, we'll see who wins here. Well, they don't, they don't play. So yellow's winning eight to four, and yellow wins eight, seven, four, four. So the dice do work. Now we have our last 100 yards series rule book. This is version three, I'm not sure which level they went from one to two and two to three, but this is version three of the series rule book. So this is what you're going to need to learn. It is on white GMT matte finish card stock or uh, paper stock. They're good stuff. And it comes in at 40 pages. So this is what you'll need. This is the current rules for the whole game. So you can download this, I'm sure, online on gmtgames.com and you'll be able to um, straight up just, just, you know, adopt your previous games to this rule set as well if you haven't done that already. So it starts off, you get your abbreviations, your table of contents, all your units, and what the markings on the units mean, and then your counter definitions, force organization, terrain, and what all the different terrain types mean the difference between stone buildings, wooden buildings, huts, urban buildings, walls. And then just go straight into the rules. And looking at the index here, uh, the rules are about 32 pages of this 40. And there's some optional rules, just a very small amount of optional rules and then a section on designing your own missions. So uh, it's, it's, it's small. It's, it's normal print, and it's, but it's not very dense. I do see a lot of, you know, there's a lot of white space. I mean, you read sections, it is uh, subdivided into sections, uh, chapters and sections, so it's easy to find, you know, to reference rules. Um, and they've clearly got them marked here, for instance, in reverse maneuver. It, just, it references bypass and tells you to go to 10, 4, 5, 1, or overrun 10, 4, 5, 3, etc. So it's good, kind of like the Combat Commander rule book does and several good quality rule books do so you got 40 pages of rules a lot of text i mean there's not a lot of graphics in here those are going to be coming in the playbook here so with gmt as as i've said before you get a the playbook can vary sometimes the playbook scenarios sometimes it's uh, in this case rule examples examples of play and designer notes uh, it can just vary from game to game what they call a playbook actually ends up being. So this is a, let's see, a 40, another 40 page rule book. So there's 10 pages of designer's notes and then some rules examples. And there you have your graphics detailing, you know, how the rules should be carried out. So a lot more graphics, a lot less text. And then you get extended, extended examples of play as well. And then a game looks like a, yeah, again, actual gameplay. Uh, game turns here, let's see. Yeah, in, extended, in the extended examples of play, it seems to go into actual turns and a, a playthrough, which you can read. You get to know that, then you get to 30, and you get to the designer's notes and how it differs from other war games you may be used to. So very cool. So two 40 page books. Then we have our tracking chart, casualty time, attacker defender, 
and then some of your tables. Sequence of play, fate table, random event table, coordination table, time lapse. So this will sit beside your game board that is made up of modular uh, map map boards that are all going to be on the uh, you know kind of coded card stock that GMT is famous for. So we'll get to those in a minute here. And then we've got the combat table. You got two of these, one for each player. It is designed as a two-player game. I think you know you can true solo this, playing both sides to the best of your ability. But uh, there's two copies of this for you know, the default two players. These are the double width coded card stock. You got your terrain effects, your blind hexes, various charts that you're going to need for playing the game. One for each player. Then your scenario cards. What's one thing they do really great with this is that the missions come on coded cardstock. Instead of being in a book, you can actually take this out, set it on the table, and leave the others in the box, and not have to worry about you know the floppiness of, of a book. It shows you which maps you're going to use, where the sides set up, which is north, which is south. So we have uh, let's see, 43, 44, 45. 46. Looks like we've got uh, through 58. So about 15, 16 missions in this one. We have a we have five sheets of counters, but one of them is a half sheet. So these are larger. These look to be about three quarters of an inch counters. You got control markers there, or uh, minus one markers. You got dummies. Illuminations, roadblocks. Now these get a little smaller than these. But your main unit counters, as we're gonna see here, are about three fourths inches. So there's sheet sheet one. Two. Got a few Americans here and some Japanese, it looks like. Some emplacements as well, looks like pillboxes and uh, bunkers. So those are unit markers, and then we got, looks like, strength markers, perhaps. And sheet four, which has some other things. We have some craters, some assembly locations, smoke markers, fire actions for the two sides, timers, initiative, German, Russian. So four and a half sheets of counters. And then we've got our map boards. So these are the nice coated cardstock. They are double-sided maps, but they are numbered on each side. So they are geomorphic, so you will, for some missions, you'll play on just one map. Others you'll piece them together into larger maps, but we'll take a quick look at all of them. There's 41, 42. I like how the artwork is, is very simple yet very effective. It has a nice 3D look to it. So we got 44 and 50 so they're not you know the back is not sequential to the one on the front in all cases probably based on how the scenarios were determined or set up so 45 is a big river and this should be self oh, there's a big city goodness gracious this is 39 and that was 45 on the other side um, this is self-contained. I'm sure you can create your own scenarios that will uh, allow you to combine maps, possibly from different packages. So 46 and 49. That's a very interesting kind of bog here. A little marsh area. These little bridges going across. 47. 51. And 
There's 48. 53. And finally we got 52. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double-sided map sheets. So if you pick up a copy of Last Hundred Yards Volume 4, The Russian Front, you're going to get those seven double-sided, double-width map cards, geomorphic map cards. You're going to get four and a half sheets of counters and markers. You're going to get 16 scenario scenarios on uh, about 10 cards perhaps you're going to get two player reference cards these are double width coded card stock one for each player you can get your tracking board to go alongside your game board you're going to get that 40 page playbook with extended examples of play and designers notes and then the series rules of volume three it's also a 40 page rule book Four dice. Let's see who wins this time here. Looks like red and black tied. Go Bulldogs. And a baggy o bags. That is everything in the last hundred yards, volume four, Russian Front from GMT Games, continuing the very, very successful series from Mike Denson. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye bye. Oh!